Organic farming, more than a method, has become a movement that has been around for more than a century. Today, it's often associated with sustainable agriculture, health advocacy, and agricultural independence. But as the movement continues its struggle, a new avenue may provide the means to branch out further into farm tourism. With the intention to bring together sustainable agribusiness and ecotourism, can the growing organic industry bridge the best of both worlds? One such province in the Philippines is daring to take on this big ambition. Join us as we visit the farm tourism industry of Negros Occidental and meet the people willing and open to share their business insight. Negros Occidental is a popular destination for those with a sweet tooth, for business, and those with a flair for local festivities. Its people, often marked by their lilting accent and generally amiable air, have been a welcome destination for travelers over the decades. But more than anything, Negros Occidental has proven its agricultural aptitude as the Philippines' largest producer of sugar. So it may come as a surprise why it engaged in lofty organic ideals. In the last eight years, since the introduction of a memorandum to make the island of Negros the organic food bowl of Asia, the sugar island has been making bold steps to heave itself toward organic farming. Today, it is building on a value chain that not only creates business, but shares an openness to impart its information to farm tourists on every level. As the current president of the Organic Producers and Retailers Association, or ONOPRA, Ramon Chin Chin Uy Jr. is well abreast on the journey of Negros from sugar to organic farming. Actually, the organic movement here in Negros can be traced back as early as the 1980s when most NGOs, environmental advocates were advocating for organic farming as counter to the Green Revolution. But it was only in 2005 when the provincial government of Negros, Occidental and Oriental signed a memorandum of agreement to make the whole island organic. So that's the time that organic in the province started to go mainstream. Negros was purely dominated by sugar before, so we need to diversify from sugar. We have to consider the food security and rural development and a sustainable way of uh, producing food. So, so that's why our government also initiated the organic program, is because we want to be sustainable. We produce our own seeds, we produce our own organic fertilizer, we produce our own food. Whatever happens outside, we will still feed our people. So that's the important thing about organic. You empower the small farmers also. We have a standing ordinance that is banning the GMOs, but the pro-GMO were lobbying to overturn the ordinance. So more people were educated during the time. That's why education is very important because you have to educate the people. This is the advantage of organic and what's the benefits. Realizing a need for agricultural independence from imports and responding positively to climate change led Negros toward this path. But for Chin Chin Uy, it was a different story. We weren't dependent at all to any inputs. At the same time, more people are getting sick. And also our environment, we are already experiencing climate change. That's where we, we saw that this is, our business is very important. That's why we wanted to be a catalyst for positive change in the community. So we made a commitment to provide healthy food to the consumers. At the same time, help the small farmers and alleviate poverty. This is the Peñalosa Organic Farm, found just a few minutes from the public market. Curiously within residential zoning limits, its owner, Ramon Peñalosa, is passionate and proud of his self-sustaining ecosystem carved inside his summer home. Now open for guests to visit, his sample farm aims to educate visitors toward the effective and potentially profitable method of organic farming. Yung usong farmer, malitang kita niyan eh. Anong uso? Dapat maging agripreneur. 
businessman. But you are able to talk about the business functions. You should act like a businessman, talk like a businessman, quack like a businessman. He can talk about marketing. You know, how to create the demand, how to satisfy the demand. He can talk about packaging, he can talk about pricing, he can talk about all the five P's of marketing. He can talk about finance when I talk about profitability ratio. To, to begin with, they're not able to feed their own country now. And as our population increases, it will get worse. What, I'm, what am I saying? I'm saying that kahit mawala lahat yung ating mga imported na mga chemical na mga abono, imported na mga pesticides, imported na lahat ng mga hybrid na mga seeds, your farm will be an oasis of productivity. From vermicomposting to probiotic livestock farming, his program challenges farmers and aspiring organic producers to rethink their approach toward the industry. What's more is that guests can experience firsthand the self-sustaining oasis of productivity, adding credence to his convictions. So we have a multi-income stream. There are times that you can see it manure. There are times that you can see it in product. There are times that you can see it in auxiliary product. There are times that you can see it in the market. And you're talking about an integrated system. With his passionate and comprehensive approach to organic education, he has drawn the attention of many groups interested to learn more about organic farming. Others even coming from as far as Canada to experience this immersion firsthand. You can actually create your own demand. We sell probiotic chicken. We sell organic fruits and vegetables. We can sell the farm inputs and I'll teach you how to make these inputs. I don't want you buying all these inputs because we can teach you how to make them in the training. Yun ang sinuturo natin. Kaya nga binibigyan. Gusto natin magkameron sila ng freedom eh. Gusto natin magkameron sila na sabihin nilang kaya ko to eh. The only thing I want to do here is in my own little place, in our own little way, in our own little time, is to change one person at a time. Creating a competitive advantage in today's markets isn't as easy as it was in the early days of organic farming. Today's organic farmers are up against an uphill battle with highly funded technologies. So how do they compete under these challenges? The answer may lie in an oasis like this. At May's Garden in Bacolod City, innovation and education converge. Owned by May and Ramon Uy, this farm tourism facility started in 2010. The couple provides a place for families and farmers alike to rest, learn, and enjoy. This started uh, in 2010 when we set up the cabana there for purposely for training of farmers. Then my wife is fan of uh, planting trees and so this, this, this is very barren before. This is the, actually this is a fish pan. Eh? So what we did was we put some soil there and my wife started planting flowers, trees and so on. And what evolved was uh, agritourism. So people, a lot of people came here to, to go around and matter of fact we put a pool there, swimming pool at the, at the back in order to accommodate the people coming in here. So the tourism aspect adds to the income of the area. But it is the farm that remains the primary attraction. Their lot, which spans roughly the size of a small residential community, opens up to introduce various systems farmers adopt to create a competitive advantage. But Ramon Uy admits, it is not an easy task. Coming from hard times himself, he understands that solutions should account for the needs and sentiments of their users, aligned with what he considers as an empathic design approach. Innovation is very important. Of course, if you, if you innovate something that we could even call the technology here, it's empathic design. We have empathy to the user. Before we develop anything, we, we analyze what is his needs before we develop. So with innovation, you make people sustainable. Amid this scenic countryscape, a closer look at May's garden shows pockets of ingenuity. Ramon Uy's penchant for innovation, matched with his experience as an industrialist, 
offers a peek into expanding their view of today's tools for organic farming. Before we set this up. But it is at the complex beside May's garden where the true genius lies. The RU machine foundry is where Ramon Uy develops machines that take organic farming on an industrial scale. With their ISO certification, the move only made Ramon Uy more determined to expand his product lines. From his patented motor shredders, to his rock and glass crushers, man-powered bike chippers, paper charcoal systems, and non-electric ram pumps that he advocates for organic technology to assist in the value chain. It should be always focused, always create another wealth. That's what we do with our farmers. We don't touch whatever income they're having now. We innovate to increase their income. Halfway through our farm tour, let's take a look at what happens between farm to plate and how these bugs are building a multi-million peso business one bite at a time. Silk is one of the oldest textile trades. Its earliest records were found in 3000 BC. Today, silk production is widespread, but here at the Organization for Industrial, Spiritual, and Cultural Advancement International, or OWISCA, their silk-making model goes beyond the finished product. OWISCA is a foundation that establishes communities in Asia, the Middle East, and parts of the West in line with the movement to create sustainable communities where its residents work together in a spirit of cooperation. It aims to encourage self-reliance to achieve their common goals. In Negros Occidental, they build on a partnership between Japanese stakeholders and their Filipino craftsmen through a farm that responds to the economic condition of local farmers who were dependent on the declining sugar industry. OISCA mission, was, our motto was food first. Any increase of food, it helped people. So we started uh, rice planting and vegetable planting. While we were working for the rice and the vegetable and uh, went to mountainside, and difficult to uh, raise rice and uh, vegetable or so far to market. That's why what is alternative for the good things in the mountainside? Some Japanese suggested sericulture, uh, plant marberry, and then raise silk worm. We started the experiment of planting marberry in the mountainside. We had a uh, hard time to adjust uh, this climate weather but uh, with a lot of big experiments, uh, we are able to produce good cocoon. We believe this is a good uh, quality, and this is really we proud uh, uh, Philippine silk. Filipino-made products that are proof of value creation through community innovation. If value creation in organic farming is the new focus of Negros Occidental, then this next company may provide encouraging news for those businesses interested to learn how one project can develop into a breakthrough story. Frederico's Island Wines was a pet project between spouses Frederico Barredo, a research plant pathologist, and his wife, Aurora Barredo a plant breeder. Together they develop a line of wines that are all natural. Using a strict process, the two developed a way to produce a light fruity wine without chemicals or additives. It's a long process but one they proudly say is worth keeping in line with Negros' organic goals. A walk through their home, one can see that it is no simple backyard business. 
huge vats and storage facilities with bottles lined along the walls for these two, island wines seem more like the retirement plan that set their skills to good use. Coming up, much of organic farming may seem rooted in social enterprises. But how does that truly translate from farm to plate? Aside from farmers, how do resort owners and retailers help educate customers and the public at large? Much of organic farming may seem rooted in social enterprise, but how does that truly translate from farm to plate? Aside from farmers, how do resort owners and retailers help educate customers and the public at large? Philip Cruz is an herbal medicines manufacturer, working hand in hand with his sister to operate Quiet Place Farm Resort. Spread over 25 hectares of forested land, farm plots and resort facilities, Quiet Place has an expansive buffer, insulating it from the busy world beyond. A place designed for large groups, often locals, come here to relax, for team building, or simply to enjoy the peace and quiet. But it is its sister company, Herbanex, who is making strides in developing organic medicines bringing something new to the farm. Quiet Place is a family farm. Uh, it's called the Quiet Place because it's literally quiet in this area. This is around 20 minutes away from Bacolod. In this farm, the main attraction I would say is that we have a large collection of medicinal plants. We have uh, over almost 300 different medicinal plants. Probably I would say this is the biggest collection, private collection of medicinal plants in the Philippines. What are the promising medicinal herbs? There's a lot. In the 80s, we had this sampung halaman. This include sambong, lagundi, ampalaya, guava, kapulko. This sampung halaman could easily be uh, 30 plants right now, 40 plants right now. It's classified as with drug-like activities already. But there are a lot more, dozens more that have drug-like activities already, and we're missing this out. Rosel is a relative of gumamela. Like gumamela, it's also hibiscus. It was introduced in the Philippines way back, I believe, 1905 by the Americans, but we did not really make use of this herb. Now, there's a lot of studies worldwide that it's a good antioxidant, good antihypertensive, Entering the restricted area, we are able to see a glimpse of some of their product processing. It's a family experience, aside from the usual amenities of pools, of uh, gardens. You actually live in a farm. You get to taste the produce here. <laughs> At Rafa Valley Place of Wellness in the town of Don Salvador Benedicto, a culinary immersion awaits visitors who are in search of everyday ways to live organic. I'm Dr. Albert Ho. I'm the president of the Negros Integrated Certification Board. It's called NICERT. The NICERT is a coveted certification that follows a stringent qualifying process in elevating the organic farming industry of Negros Occidental. Most of the farms in this program aim to or are in the process of acquiring such certification necessary to establish the credibility of any organic claim. So it seems only fitting that Dr. Albert Ho is well known for his staunch and strict views on this movement. Rafa Valley is a place of wellness. It's called Rafa because uh, we get it from the Bible. God is our healer. This has been three years now that we are open to people outside. We conceptualize this because of the Hippocrates saying, which says, let your food be your medicine. So that's what I'm teaching people now, that when they change a the lifestyle, they can go a long way. Our first property is two and a half hectares, and then we added for the casitas, it's four and a half. Right now, it's around seven hectares.
a place for detoxification and healing. What makes Rafa Valley unlike any other is truly the disarming yet persuasive personal lectures of Dr. Albert Ho. A very accommodating host, this one-on-one -on -one experience allows for guests to get an in-depth understanding. This one is omega-3. This is very rich in omega-3. This is called purslane weed. Omega-3 is very good for brain development, for joints, your joints, no lubrication. Every time that we reach this, I always discuss about lettuce because a lot of people, they don't know that lettuce is the best sedative, natural sedative, because of the lectocarium in the lettuce, which is opium-like effect. It will relax you and put you to sleep. A weed that grows in Don Salvador. Now this is called Guto Cola, a memory enhancer. I usually put seven leaves in my juice every day. This is uh, the thigh variety of turmeric, a research already of University of California, Los Angeles, to be good for Alzheimer's, arthritis, diabetes, and hypertension. And last December, they have a study that this turmeric is very good for anxiety, depression. It can even compete with the drug Prozac. In Manila, Chichirica, in our place, we call this apat-apat, but the name of this in English is periwinkle. This is already in the Molecular Cancer Therapeutics book. This is the source of uh, your anti-cancer drug called Bencristine and Benblastine. Guests can stay anywhere between a day trip to a weekend-long program and feast on their healthy menu. As the sun sets across Negros Occidental, the view of Canlaon Volcano from afar is in itself a healing retreat. With a strong backing of the province and an ever-growing interest in organic produce, the next generation of retailers are getting involved in expanding Negros Occidental's organic market. Now, they're bringing the products to the already educated buying public. Fresh Start started um, 2005. We produced vermi castings out of the compost and the African night crawlers. And since we needed something to show the efficacy of our vermi and the organic fertilizer, we started with a small demo garden just beside our farm. Around that time, nag-uso yata yung lettuce, yung mga salad thing in the restaurant. So the area that was supposed to be just a demo for the efficacy of our fertilizer parang became a farm that delivers the fresh lettuce and herbs to different restaurants all over Bacolod. Together with her husband, Ramon Chinchin Uy Jr., they supply eight supermarkets in parts of Visayas and Luzon, creating a steady chain for their products and partner farms and eventually expanding to restaurants in Manila. Aside from supplying supermarkets, you also supply restaurants here in Bacolod. Here in Negros, we have a certifying body. It's called NICERT. It's a group of inspectors going around checking, certifying all the organic farms here in Negros. Our farm was the first one to be certified as an organic farm. Overall, her cause is simple. There's no perfect age to start any business as long as you love what you're doing. Uh, since Negros is an agricultural province, we're more inclined to do agricultural stuff. Aside from that, there's also this advocacy of ours to protect what we have. If you want to live longer, if you want to give our descendants a better place to live in, that's, I think it's the best way. We have to go organic and make everything sustainable. So we drink buku every day and when we From add education to innovation, from values creation to healthy lifestyle changes, and finally from farm to table. Farm tourism seems to be alive with a clear vision and a viable market. Whether you are here to learn, here to relax, here to source out organic produce, 
and innovations for your business. Negros Occidental lends itself to a host of travel and business potential, one that the province openly invites you to realize and experience for yourself.